spent almost half of my life and the formative years in, in an IIT campus. And after that, I was very lucky to be uh, uh, to get through JE and to be a student at, at IIT. So, um, and it's it's been uh, an, a journey where um, I was very fortunate to be surrounded by some brilliant minds. I was um, fortunate that the only question people asked were some problems or tricky problems that they wanted us to solve when we were growing up as kids, because you, you know how professors are, you know, you go to their place and they ask you some question to keep you busy and you're asked and you spend your entire evening trying to answer those questions. So that inculcation about curious, being curious about um, how looking at problems, defining them and solving them has been part of our life and looking at ideas and saying, how can that idea be applied? Um, we were very fortunate to grow up in that situation. Um, and, you know, both, for both my brother and I, one of the iconic images for us is, you know, our father typically really late at night before any lecture would be writing in those days, there were the transparencies where you used to write with the, you know, overhead projector used to write the lectures and our father would be working through the lecture even though he had given them like probably hundreds of times before. And we asked him a question, why do you do that? He said, look, the students are so smart. I don't want to have a, have a question that is asked to me that I can't answer. And that ethos about working and staying at the current edge of the topic. And also the drive that IIT students had was, was instilled in us. Um, for us, I think the, uh, you know, that the other thing about IIT was of course, it introduced me to Kushagra, who is uh, my, um, uh, you know, uh, my hostel, hostel friend, and then uh, we decided when we started the G Global Gene Corp eight years ago uh, to, be, to be partners in this journey. Um, I, I wanted to touch upon, um, as you said, you know, what in the vision of IIT Delhi. So if I, if I go back to what IIT Delhi says, it's saying it wants to, we want to contribute to India and the world through excellence in scientific and technical education resources. The second thing is to serve as a valuable resource for industry and society. The third is to remain a source of pride for all Indians. And what that training meant for us was it gave us the you know, uh, ability to solve cutting edge problems. It was the aspirations to use technology for good and a battle hardness to meet tough situations head on and to be able to persevere through them to solve them. And finally is, uh, is it, and the most important possibly is the network and camaraderie of friends who are there for life, which is what we see, the bond we see in this, in this call as well. Um, and eight years ago when Kushagra, Soumya, uh, Jonathan uh, and I came together, uh, our insight was that genetics is exceptionally powerful uh, because imagine if we had the code for life, what would that, you know, what could we do with it, right? How can we personalize our entire life journey? Uh, how can we solve for disease? And the beauty of that, um, of that technology evolution was that in the last 20 years, what costed $2.7 billion to write, which is convert, convert our biological information into machine readable information, cost less than $1,000. And it's going to be a few hundred dollars before it drops down in price. So that's the first step. The second element is the artificial intelligence, data science, and all the compute networks the ability to look at this data and make sense of it and compare across uh, has improved tremendously. And the final thing was there were use cases about pharma, for example, where you could find new drugs and novel targets looking at this, this insight from a, from a human code. And if you think about it, the, the strength ultimately is about looking at signals and noise. Whether you're in any industry, ultimately you're looking for signal and extracting away the noise to see what is useful in terms of application to the end, end consumer um, or, or, or the problem you're looking to solve. And these are all the skills. If you go back to our training at IIT, that is what that, that training has been about, right? It is about, you know, the core, te core techniques to be able to do that. And in our mind, what struck us was that this was bigger than the internet. So we have benefited from the internet and the genomic revolution builds on that. But, the, but, the, but there was an issue, but it's fundamentally bigger because it impacts each one of us. And the challenge with, um, uh, the promise is that it can personalize life experience for each one of us. But the challenge was that there was a fatal, and there is a fatal flaw in, in the system, which is that we do not have representative data and insights about populations and for diseases because 80 percent of all data is from people of european ancestry so imagine i'm telling each one of us is looking at it saying this is incredible technology it will change the life experience 
but it is very likely that we will not get the realize the entire benefit of this. And that is what inspired us to say, look, we need to solve this problem because irrespective of how rich or how poor, or how technologically advanced you are, we will not get the best of medical technology and healthcare technology and the promise of genetics unless we have this foundation in place. And that is what we started doing at Global Gene Coffee, solving this problem. Uh, we're solving for disease to find novel therapeutics. We're working on ultimately delivering precision medicine. And just like the mobile revolution, which happened in India, we are inspired to say, how can we deliver it to everyone everywhere? So it's not just for the elite, but it's for everyone. And that's what IIT is about. That's what India is about, which is our passion. You know, we can only succeed together. So what I'm uh, truly excited by is, of course, the opportunity in terms of this platform to share uh, our vision, but also to say that there is a lot of work to be done. It's about, you know, talent and capacity building. How do we train the next generation of IITNs or college graduates and others to have the skill set to succeed in this new area, which is where the jobs are going to be created. Each job that we create creates 10 to 15 jobs in the economy. How can we be uh, use this exceptionally powerful and influential network uh, to build partnerships to accelerate our mission and make it into a joint journey for all of us. So, you know, whether it's in pharma R&D, whether it's in health providers, including health insurers, et cetera, whether it's financing and funding of people who want to be associated, uh, whether it's research, because there are adjacent research areas where we can only accelerate and succeed together. And um, that is, is what is... A, you know, something we wanted to put out there. So I wanted to end by just thanking you for the honor um, and for recognizing our work and for recognizing the idea of genomics um, that, that is relevant for everyone, especially these times um, in, in the, the, the extraordinary times that we're going through um, and for the IIT ethos of supporting each other and working together. Um, so the question I would ask and I would invite you is to join us in this, in this incredible journey so that we can create the future now together and benefit from it. On that note, I'd just like to thank you for your time and, and uh, hand over to Kushagra. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sumit. This is fabulous. I love the vision of making it globally available. I love the vision of this is possibly the next big trend over there. I love the thoughts of, you know, how we can give back to the society and create more jobs and kind of, you know, so many other things. Big round of applause for Sumit. And now let's over to Kushal. Thank you, everyone. Uh, firstly, uh, it's an honor to be here. And uh, I thank on behalf of the entire team for the recognition. So Sumit has already shared his thoughts um, about our joint aspirations, so I'll not touch upon them again, but I'll talk a bit about our IIT and the post-IIT journey, which was the precursor to Global Gene Corp. Um, we have known each other, so Sumit and I were in the same hostel, we have known each other for more than 20 years now. And as most of us have gone through that experience, we know the kind of trusted relationships that build over time, that we have been in different continents at different points in time, were in the same business school across different timestamps and in London uh, on some overlapping time period. So when around seven, eight years ago, Sumit and Jonathan called me up, I was in Mumbai working with Reliance Geo and they were in a noisy cafeteria in London. And they were talking to me with very high excitement about how genomics can actually truly disrupt the world. And there's a huge, huge gap, which only a combination of uh, sort of expertise of the people we know, which we have done in the past and we know that we can bring to the table, can solve. That, that just got me excited. So to the extent that I, uh, next week I put in my papers, I call up Sumit, okay, I put in my papers, but So that's how, that's how our journey started, uh, which is almost what a lot of, I would say, uh, innovations need, a bit of a leap of faith. And I think the seven years after that, on that leap of faith have been extremely rewarding and cherishing because working with a team that wants to make an impact on India, give back to the society, while working at the cutting edge of science is almost, you can say it's a dream come true kind of an initiative for me personally. So 
the, the one of the reasons why uh, we are here is also about the Roddenberry Prize that uh, we have been recently awarded and just wanted to touch a bit about, about that as well. So in these seven years, we have built a digital technologies platform for health management. Where, so the entire platform and the suite of apps on top of that uh, were, were ready. And when the pandemic happened, the team had uh, an intense discussion over a few days to say, we have a lot of uh, capabilities. How do we use them to actually serve the current challenge? And that's one of the advantages of uh, actually working in a digital data-driven, so, uh, technology-driven world, which was one of your questions, uh, Pradeep Ji, on. So that's what we are trying to uh, sort of science is not just a pen and paper science that was in our thought process in, in 40, 50 years from ago, but more about how do we create data-driven, technology-driven scientific insights and applications. And so the team spent some time, we repurposed and customized one of our uh, digital health management apps, which is what we call is Co-Trace, uh, which actually can provide a lot of features than when we had launched it uh, in terms of contact tracing, in terms of uh, uh, geo, uh, sort of geo restrictions or information about uh, geographies which have high number of cases, in terms of e-pass, as well as many other such features which any any sort of entity or a sovereign can use to uh, manage uh, the pandemic very well. And we were fortunate that uh, we were one of the first who had developed that and Roddenberry uh, team actually appreciated the impact it made on, on the entire thought process on how COVID apps were being made at that time. And uh, we were recognized for it. So uh, just wanted to summarize with that and uh, thanks again for the entire team for us uh, for us to be invited here. So this was Sumit and Kushaga, 1999 and 2001, BTEC from IIT Delhi, who have transformed themselves as well as the area that they are working in. And please give a round of applause to both of them and we very heartedly felicitate you and we are proud of both of you for the achievement and which is just one milestone. And I'm sure there'll be much more higher achievements down the road that I'll be looking forward to from both of you. Now, I have one question and this is for Sumit. Sumit, as I suppose Sumit and Kushagra are both. So what are you going to do with that $1 million? Hmm. So can I, can I become your, can I lift your briefcase and all that kind of stuff? Sir, please don't embarrass us. Uh, I think, uh, you know, as an IIT senior, we will always be the one lifting a briefcase. So uh, we need your blessings. So for so, us, so, um, sweet. so, so sweet. look, for us, I think, look, it's, it's um, what we do takes a lot of, a lot of investment, right? Um, and um, so it's, again, uh, going into the R&D, going to make sure that we are, you know, we're able to further that and build that. I think for, for, for me personally, I mean, as, as Kushagra shared um, as well, I mean, look, Gene Roddenby was someone that we grew up with. If you remember every Sunday, it used to come, Star Trek used to come between 10.30 to 11 um, or, or so. And we used to be glued at our neighbor's television because many of us didn't even have a TV at home, right? Uh, but you saw that and Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock used to inspire us. And what we loved, you know, what Gene Roddenberry did was a visionary. He created a technology-led um, world where, you know, there was fairness, there was equality and equity in the way that was delivered. And in some ways has been very influential for us as, a, as a, you know, subconsciously and as well as consciously in building that thought process. Uh, so for us, you know, the honor of being recognized and the alignment in values and mission is so critical uh, that, uh, you know, they, that we are very excited. And I, you know, Kushal would remember when we were shortlisted for the second round, I said, yeah, bus ho gaya, itni dur tak aage bhot hai, unho ne socha ye bhot badi baat hai, right? That kind of a thing. And to be selected is, is like, um, it, it was, it was, it was incredible experience. So I, I think for us, you know, the fact that it gets our message out there, gets this combination and the you know gets the recognition and hopefully partnerships to accelerate that mission because we can't solve it together i think that's the key message but it's only we are part of the ecosystem but we have been very fortunate to have the right 
the right training or being in the right place at the right time. So that's that's what we're going to do. We're going to just focus on research to, to take so, it to the next level. So the next I don't know if Kushal has anything to add. <laughs> so next time when I meet you and Professor Manmohan Goel, I may ask you to give me a bottle of Thames River water, you know, so that maybe I can imbibe a little bit of that with my IIT genes and get transformed also. Thank you very much. It was very lovely to have you folks and we <laughs> look forward to getting you more and more involved into our globalization journey. Take care. And once again, a big round of applause for both Sumit and Kushaka. So from these lovely gentlemen that we spoke Thank to, you. we now move across to a lovely lady. Now, you know, I have, I know a lot of uh, acronyms. I know stuff like VR, AR is virtual reality, augmented reality, but I had not heard of this acronym called AIR. Now, if anybody from the global community can tell me what is AIR, then I owe you a bottle of wine and I'll send you one virtually. Okay. So with that, I am delighted to present Pratibha Varma. Pratibha is 2014 graduate from IIT Delhi, and she is AIR3. And what does AIR3 mean? AIR stands for All India Rank. Hmm. So Pratibha has been uh, with Vodafone post IIT Delhi and then she was with the Indian Forest Service and then where she is at the moment is she is an assistant commissioner in training for income tax so if you've got any tax issues you know whom to go to mm -hmm. and now she is heading into the IAS with the All India rank number three and I'm particularly proud of her not only because that she's AI number three, but as a champion, she's a role model for females, you know. Mm. So please give a round of applause to Pratibha. And Pratibha, I invite you now to talk about what made you go for the civil services. Um, what do you see? And, and I also want to talk to you, I want to listen to your views about what do you see as the values that IIT Delhi Alumni Association should be, um, you know, really make things sense for you? Because end of the day, you know, we've got today a gentleman who's 1966 graduate from IIT Delhi. We've got Pratibha who's 2014 graduate from IIT Delhi. So we've got a very wide span. So therefore, the value attributes for such a wide demographic alumni population it's, it's really, really fascinating. So over to you, Pratibha. Please unmute yourself. Yes, you have unmuted yourself. Let's hear your thoughts. Yeah. Thank you, sir. First of all, I would like to thank uh, all the team members and the IT Delhi Alumni Association for recognizing my effort. And it's truly, uh, and truly, I'm truly honored and humbled by this recognition and felicitation. Uh, uh, as you have already uh, given my introduction, uh, I have come I belong to Sultanpur, Uttar Pradesh. I was born and brought up there, but it was in IIT Delhi where I truly grew up. Uh, it was at this campus where I was truly exposed to the world in any meaningful sense. I uh, got the opportunity to interact with the best minds of our country and from across the world. And IIT Delhi had a truly transformative impact upon my personality. Before that, I did not uh, really thought about going to civil services. But when I came to IIT Delhi, uh, I got engaged with a number of activities that uh, the campus was offering, whether it was in cultural domain or uh, with uh, social responsibility. So I started working with NSS and it was there when I got to know that the things I took for granted before, for example, access to education, access to health or technology, it was not available to a large section of our society, the society which was truly deprived, which was truly disadvantaged. 
these were the people these were students who could not even read and write uh, and it was in iit delhi when i got engaged with vidya ngos for four years i worked there for four years and i was involved in remedial education there were a number of children more than 50 60% who could not even read and write uh, a standard textbook from uh, class 2 so it was there when i realized that my heart lied in civil services i wanted to help these people and even before that from iit delhi we have had a number of great people who had cracked this examination and were working for the development of these uh, development of our nation they were truly uh, utilizing the immense resources available with the government and they were directing all these efforts to the development of these people who really required it and i Uh, started realizing that i want to work for them i want to uh, utilize these immense resources available with our uh, country with the government and uh, i want to lift them up from their current state of poverty current state of dis, uh, disadvantage that they are currently living in and uh, because of this experience and apart from that uh the experience i got from uh my professors who were guiding us in nss my seniors who were exploiting uses of exploiting technology to bring out the best of education to these people apart from that i started working towards one important issue that was always uh not very prominent in our society which was gender sensitization we had a number of girls even in our campus who were uh, sometimes harassed who were abused and they had no platform to voice out their stories to the people so we started using technology and we started providing them a platform where they could share their experience and we could engage with the male community in our campus in our society and sensitize them towards this issue and later i got to know that india as it is today even now the female and the women do not have the very basic rights when it comes to education and health even now when we look at gender uh, gender development index india lies at uh, india lies at about 100 position uh, in 120 country basically it uh, it is not a situation where we want to be in next century when we are talking about industrial revolution when we talk about india becoming a major power at global stage we should not have half of the population living in such condition where they are abused they are harassed they are subjected to violence and it was all this experience i got from iit delhi in that way my journey towards civil services started with my journey in iit delhi and it was where i got a number of friends who are even now my guides my philosophers even now inspire me towards working for this goal that i had created for myself they uh, they support me when i'm down they support me when i'm having doubts about my goals and the kind of bond the kind of support and the recognition they have given me this is what i want from the larger iit delhi alumni i know when i would be working in future towards policy formulation when i would be working in districts for uh, providing these technology driven solutions to the society i know that i would need the help of the expertise of all the people that i am seeing today here and all the people all the friends that are working in various domains be it technology be it ngo be it startups or finance iit delhi alumni is all across the world they are working in different fields they are leaders in all the fields they are currently working in and their expertise will be crucial towards developing india as a major power developing india as a developed nation and i do require i uh, know that their support would be uh, immense Uh, their support would be very important for realizing this vision that i have where i want to see india as a truly digitally empowered society as a society where every gender is given their role is given a recognition and given importance uh, their contribution is recognized in that way i think iit delhi alumni association is charting their path towards that i can see the uh, fruits of your efforts the team the kind of effort that team has put in here today uh, with that i would like to thank uh, pradeep sir for
uh, giving me this platform to share my ideas and uh, I would like to thank the whole team. Thank you. Pratipa, I am delighted to see your thoughts at such a young age in terms of what you see in terms of solving the problem of the country and are also delighted to see in terms of women empowerment and in terms of inclusion that you are thinking about. You know. I applaud you for that and I, I really look forward to you as a role model for millions of females you know, in, in globally as well as specifically in India. And at the same time, I also want to highlight to you that here is you who are entering the civil service. We also have in this meeting today, Ambassador Pradeep Kapoor, who is also my batchmate, and he joined IFS at a time when I not so many IITs were looking at the civil service, and he was uh, the secretary, he became the secretary a level officer in, in the, the government of India. So this is what the span is. At one end at the senior most level, one end people entering into the service. And what I hear is that 50% of I, the, uh, the civil service population is from the IITs. So I have now got so much of faith now in terms of what kind of a transformation which can happen today. So a big round of applause for Pratibha, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for coming across and joining us. And we look forward to keeping you engaged and involved in this IIT globalization in a value-driven association that we are wanting to transform to. So thank you once again. Thank you for that. And now we move across to the third item on the agenda. At every session, we have a mystery speaker. A speaker who I do not disclose the identity of, but somebody that I know is a senior alumni and has been doing some great work in their chosen profession. And with that, I am delighted to present Meeta Meeta Brahma Ray, 1977 graduate from IIT Delhi. She has done her master's and then she also did master's work MBA from IIT Delhi. And then she did her PhD from MDI Gurgaon. She is currently the head of HR at NIIT and she has spent her working career with SBI, with nuclear software and a whole lot of other entities. She has been involved in uh, research in, in industry but there is a very interesting aspect of Meeta's personality that she is a painter and she has been a painter right from the IIT Delhi days. So ladies and gentlemen a big welcome to Meeta Ray and Meeta over to you. Thank you uh, for giving this opportunity. I think this is a wonderful thing you've got go and they represent, you know, some of the finest strengths of IIT. The fact that we can jump multiple domains, that is something I have done in my life. I think the, you know, kind of honing we get at IIT uh, for our creative abilities, analytical abilities, leadership. I think we got such a wonderful, you know, base that we were sort of prepared for anything in the world. And uh, thank you for, you know, also bringing us face to face with people like Pratibha. Pratibha, I think that was hugely inspirational. It was so nice to know about your work. And I look forward, Pradeep, to these, you know, sessions. We are getting to know what people are doing and uh, what the youngsters, I mean, so much that they are achieving. Uh, so thank you so much. So Pradeep's brief to me was, you know, to share a little bit about what I have been doing since IIT and how things went and how I look back and also uh, some views on, you know, taking things global. Uh, so that's why the first very thing, of course, was this appreciation. I think you're doing a huge lot of work already. Uh, so to talk about my own life, it has been actually intertwined with uh, IIT a lot because uh, one, I started off with, you know, I married a batchmate. So uh, this ecosystem of friends and a peer group, the bright peer group from uh, IIT, that was, you know, the uh, one of the best parts 
the global faculty we got, the excellent facilities and the peer group. So some of that ecosystem, uh, I had the advantage, um, you know, of uh, common friends. And uh, of course, now it continues via technology with common WhatsApp groups and sessions like this. So I think that was one big inheritance that I got in my life. Um, you know, uh, also when I started off, my first job was uh, with the State Bank of India, where again, I had a lot of IITN uh, colleagues, as well as I would meet a lot of IIT We lost you, Mita. In uh, post the uh, SBI stint, when I had taken a break uh, when my first son was born, then again I ran a coaching institute, which again prepared students for IIT JE. What else? So that, that was again another connect. And uh, later, by the way, my son also went to IIT Delhi. So you know, sort of the circle got completed. Um, I, uh, like Pradeep mentioned, I went back to IIT also for, a, for an executive MBA uh, degree and I have worked in my corporate life in the HR and, you know, leadership development areas, again with a lot of, uh, there again with a lot of IITians who have either founded their companies or were part of the senior leadership and I think this was one amazing part that uh, we could jump domains and we have a basic, uh, you know, ability of analytical thinking and solutioning. Um, so that was, um, you know, uh, I think wh what I would say is a common thread of my uh, corporate experience. The last, uh, I mean, apart from the banking, the last 15, 20 years have been spent in leadership development and HR, strategic HR consulting areas and uh, also mentoring entrepreneurs and uh, Apart from this, the other thing, as Pradeep mentioned, is that I always had an interest in painting, uh, which I got in the IIT days. Also, I had enough opportunity to practice what with, you know, so many events happening, the collage making, poster making, a lot of exciting times. I um, uh, have run, I have had a lot of uh, exhibitions um, at, for example, Lalit Kala Academy and Triveni Kala Sangam and... Uh, you know, across the world, but I want to share that my first art exhibition also was, uh, you know, with a, with an IIT alumna's friend, uh, because she was a chemical engineer, but she was running an art business because of her passion in art. So that is what, you know, that is the diversity among um, IIT alumni that you see. So I, I, you know, that's what I want to say, you know, the part that Pradeep, you said you share about uh, globalization. I think this is what we have to really showcase. The fact that IITians are spread across the world, across so many kinds of businesses that during our lives we are able to you know, make jumps across domains. Uh, now with the emerging technologies, everybody talks about you know, the learning how to learn and uh, also uh, for those of us who for example teach on how do you teach students how to learn. I think this is a great thing that uh, IITians bring. Uh, IITs built our character, built our competence in these core areas and have given us a great network. So like when Sumit and Kushagra were speaking, they said, can we together help in this capacity building and the network across cities? So I think that is something all of us as a global community can really address. And uh, those of us who have been in leadership areas, um, because I can see often uh, the younger people need some anchoring and some mentoring at times. Sometimes just a person to uh, brainstorm with or some, some listening. So I think we can, you know, the community can do this. Uh, that as people come up with new ideas and new businesses, those of us who have, uh, you know, seen several domains already, we could probably, uh, you know, do our part in terms of uh, you know, doing some capacity building and some coaching. So those were, uh, you know, my ideas about what uh, this community can do, uh, having a network across cities. 
So I, that's what I have to share. Thank oh, you. That is absolutely lovely, Mita. I loved your thoughts about, you know, especially in terms of capacity building, in terms of how uh, IITNs are spread all over the world. But my question to you is, when are you going to have your next virtual exhibition? Oh, I have been having a lot of virtual exhibitions. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, right from college days, uh, obviously the person one looked up to as the greatest scientist come artist the world has ever seen was, of course, Da Vinci. And uh, so the there, there, Stanford ex uh, University once had this online um, exhibition where the theme was science and art. And I think it was uh, to coincide with the centenary, centenary of Darwin's birth, some, some such occasion. So they had a science and art thing. And four of my paintings are part of that online exhibition. By wow, them. wow. Please, please share us the link and I would love to share it with the rest of the community. Sure, hmm? sure. I'll, do that. I'll do that. So uh, this has been so nice. And every mystery speaker who comes onto this platform is invited to be a mentor with the Globalization and Global Chapters and Connections Initiative. And the simple reason is that it, there is no, end of the day, what is a mentor? A mentor is somebody, he, doesn't, he or she does not own any actions, but because of the experience, they can provide certain insights to people and it doesn't have to be restricted to a particular area. It can be about education, it can be about startup, it can be about professional development, it can be about across anything. So, and so uh, I invite Mita to be continue her association with the globalization journey as a mentor. And please give a big round of applause to Mita. Thank you, thank you. I just want to add one more line that you know, for the mentor, he or she has to be invested in the mentee's success. Yes. And we have such strong bonds as, a, as IIT alumni that that is a given. So it is bound to succeed. Thank love, you again. Love it, love it, love it. Now, moving on to the next item of the agenda. Every session, we also invite one of our advisory board members. And who are advisory board members? Advisory board members are nothing but senior uh, alumni who have been doing a lot of interesting work in leadership roles all over the world. And today we've caught uh, now advisory board members, two from USA, two from Canada, uh, two from Europe, including UK, from Japan, as well as from ASEAN. Today I am delighted to present Tipankar Sen Gupta, who is 1997 BTEC from IIT Delhi, 2013 from Harvard, and he is currently a partner with Ernst & Young Cons Consulting Services, currently based in Hanoi in Vietnam. His past career has involved companies like IBM, Accenture, and number of others. He has also been in the Middle East and has been actively involved in building up the IIT Delhi or IIT community in the Middle East in one of his past roles. So with, with over to that, please welcome Dipankar with a big round of applause and over to you Dipankar. Pradeep ji, uh, thank you so much for the kind words and the introduction and uh, a warm greeting uh, to, uh, to all uh, alumni members. It's uh, fascinating uh, to, see the, to see the entire group uh, across so many years. And uh, it's a pleasure to see some old friends uh, from campus days. Uh, and, you know, particularly congratulations uh, to Sumit and team uh, for the wonderful work. Uh, you guys are doing and uh, the recent uh, recognition uh, as well as uh, you know our our youngest uh, member who's uh, just uh, is just joining the government so uh, i think uh, I, there is no dearth of uh, you know amazing um, i would say uh, accomplishments which uh, you know our our alumni are having all over the world so i'm based currently in vietnam and i've been here for the last 3 years 
and uh, quite interestingly it's a, it, it's a fascinating country to so to say i mean having spent a lot of time in asean and uh, now uh, in vietnam it's a very young country has gone through a lot of uh, political uh, uh, challenges as you would be aware of but the most interesting part is it's one of the fastest growing economies these days and uh, 70% of the country is less than 30 years old so a lot of youth a uh, lot of young people a lot of energy and when i look back at uh, you know the uh, the journey which uh, uh, you know several of uh, us have undertaken over these years there's so much resonance with what i see in this country with what probably india was 25 30 years back as the economy is opening up and various um, activities are happening uh, and as as i reflect on this and i was thinking uh, about some of the key things which probably a few two or three things which i thought uh, maybe we just share with the group uh, some reflections i think the first thing is um, you know as uh, meeta ji said uh, the whole diversity of our alumnus and as we are seeing with every passing year the diversity of our alumnus is uh, you know going from strength to strength we now have recognized authors we have people in the performing arts industry of course we have illustrious people in science technology business government and arts so various experiences and uh, various backgrounds uh, you know uh, are, are thriving and you know i think everyone's efforts big or small is contributing uh, to to the recognition which uh, you know the the institution and the community uh, you know gains uh, and so rightly deserves it's everyone's hard work uh, you know on a day to day basis at the grassroots on the ground so when i came here uh, to this country you know i i wanted to share an interesting story so as i was talking to some of the uh, some of the senior business leaders here local uh, vietnamese business leaders and i was telling them about my background so they said that do you know some an alumnus of your uh, you know iit is has been awarded the friend of vietnam and uh, i was a bit curious uh, and i wanted to find out what that is and um, uh, you know uh, lo and behold a gentleman by the name of shantanu shrivastav a uh, very senior alumnus um, from iit kanpur he used to be with the indian foreign services but then went on to become an entrepreneur and uh, way back in the early 90s uh, started his journey uh, fostering bonds of trade business and cooperation between vietnam and india and he was the third indian to be awarded the friend of vietnam award by the prime minister of this country uh, the first two being pandit jawaharlal nehru and indira gandhi wow. so <laughs> so that that was so that was that was that was so inspiring uh, to 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 know and as i reflected on it and as we see uh, you know the journeys which so many of our uh, fellow alums have done and you know um, received excellence and recognition in their fields i think uh, there are certain qualities and attributes regardless of uh, you know whatever we are doing which sort of echoes across the board and i think the first thing is the resilience i think the resilience which uh, probably comes as a part of training probably you know of the fact that most of the students who join the institute come from fairly simple backgrounds in the country and uh, make their way up uh, there's a lot of hard work toil which goes into it the adaptability you know we we've, we've seen alumni i've been mean, i've been interacting with some alumni here i i met some very senior alumni in the middle east who were working so closely with arab community there and had won their trust and appreciation and were recognized business leaders in the middle east the tenacity and of course the courage the courage to you know uh, think of something new the courage to go for the unknown the courage to you know give it give it once all i think i think these are certain values which we have all learned by way of you know the training which uh, happened uh, to all of us uh, you know when we were uh, at the institute and then it continues through life as well so i guess um, i think uh, the key thing which really is so humbling and so inspiring and you know pradeep ji thanks for taking the initiative Uh, and of course to all um, other uh, alumni uh, association members uh, get to see the amount of efforts which everyone is putting in behind the scenes you know everyone has their own uh, day jobs they have their own uh, you know businesses their personal commitments 
but the amount of time which is which everyone puts in to sort of make sure that you know um, it is something worthwhile for everyone i think deeply appreciated and deeply humbled and inspired i think this aspect of going beyond ourselves uh, this aspect of thinking about things not just as individuals but as a community the aspect of giving back uh, the aspect of most essentially becoming human i think uh, that is something which uh, regardless of which technologies come in which eras of business which eras of government come in what economy happens you know whatever challenges happen as long as we stay close and true to our roots we stay close to our values and uh, you know um, get inspired by our senior alums you know taking time out it's 11 o'clock in the night in sydney i'm aware of that and you know you are you are um, you know put you know getting all of us together uh, it's so inspiring to see and um, i am always available in a humble capacity to support in this part of the world the uh, the alumni in whatever way i can it's a very young economy but a lot of interest in science and technology some amazing industrial activities and business activities going on here uh, great math background of students uh, always uh, the high school math students get featured in the olympiads uh, fascinating market opportunities as well so please feel free to reach out it's a pleasure to connect with everyone again and uh, look forward uh, to um, engaging further and supporting in whatever way i can thanks for shankar i love your humbleness in spite of you know having leadership position and that is one attribute that i find across the board is yes our alumni you know reach great milestones in the profession i mean yes they are still humble and and how we are part of the whole community there is this another aspect of dipankar which comes out as you spoke but we have not discussed is that you work in not for profit sector so dipankar uh, can you please tell us that what is the not for profit work, uh, entity that you started in vietnam and what is exactly you been doing yeah th- thanks pradeep ji for uh, mentioning this and thanks for uh, uh, you know the kind words uh, i think uh, what we felt as a group of uh, like minded friends uh, was that you know everyone in due course uh, manages to do something reasonable with all our lives but what are we giving back so a small measure which uh, have started is to connect with uh, students uh, from uh, re- you know communities districts uh, areas of uh, countries in asia pacific largely southeast asia and india to begin with we are slowly going into africa as well where we are reaching out to specific uh, district level community level colleges where the learners may be first generation learners nobody in their families have uh, ever had the opportunity to receive education and they have reached the stage of college and to get like minded friends to just share their experiences perspectives help them in their education to employment journeys uh, so we created a non profit called cdu center for development of employable workforces and uh, in our small measure we are trying to reach out to these grassroots level communities and uh, you know uh, share our knowledge insights connect them with some industry people where learning resources are available uh it's amazing to see the power of youth uh you know and the power of technology i think the digital uh, connectivity really helps reach uh, no, reach help provide knowledge to the grassroots and that we are seeing uh, when we kind of communicate with these students as well the level of uh, awareness the level of interest so that's where i'm i spend uh, most of my personal time uh, beyond work um, uh, whenever possible and uh, hopefully we can add some value to some lives um, and you know in some way give back uh, to the community uh, that's 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 all uh, pradeep ji at this stage yeah. thank you very much it was a pleasure to have you over here today and i look forward to your continued involvement the role of advisory board members and we've got two for the asean countries one is yourself as well as there is rajiv kapoor of 1976 based in singapore um, and i am calcutta and and i'll tell you about is really used to uh, mentor the people iit alumni help build up the chapters and the community together 
So we look forward to continued involvement. We've got Sundi Ayer from Singapore. We've got Raghi who's celebrating Onam today. Uh, so there's a great community in ASEAN. Um, I suppose predominantly in Singapore and a smattering of them in other countries. And it's really how we blend them into our globalization journey. So a big round of applause once again for Dipanka. And thank you once again thank for you. joining thank us. You. Thank you. And now, you see, when I living in Sydney for, I've been living in Sydney for 30 years. IIT Delhi has changed significantly from the time that I finished my BTEC, which was 43 years back. So, like me, we've got alumni like Harinder and Agyapal in Montreal, who are 1966 batch living in Montreal for 50 years. So what I've been trying to do is also blend perspectives from IIT Delhi now. And the same vein also to introduce other members of the EC for IIT Delhi Alumni Association. So to broaden this engagement. So with that in mind, I am delighted to introduce Dr. Sudhir Thwetia, who is 1984 batch uh, IIT Delhi. Uh, he's done his PhD very much in the field of academics, uh, but a great person who's also been an EC member for almost 20 years. So with this, I'm kickstarting another part in our series today where we'll start introducing different EC members from to understand what is this EC guy? What do they do? You know. So big round of applause for Sudhi and over to you, Sudhi. Sudhi, you're on mute. Please unmute yourself, Sudhi. Okay. Yes. Uh, I, I think now. You okay. can hear me. Yes, we can hear you now. So, so uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Pradeep. Mr. Pradeep. And uh, as uh, 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 other other EC Sudhir, members, Sudhir, you have two sessions open, so we are getting an echo. Okay. So I'll uh, close one. Yeah. Okay. No, I think it's not going. Is it? No, it's, it's good. better. Thank you. So we actually thought that it's your avatar also alongside you, but it's all right. <laughs> now the avatar is gone. So thank you very much, Mr. Pradeep, and all other members present here. As uh, Mr. Pradeep has said, that uh, I am second old, oldest, the senior most member after Mr. Pradeep in the uh, security committee, and I have been involved with the IIT Delhi Asso uh, Alumni Association for the last two decades. And uh, I have been elected in EC for the fourth time. So I have seen uh, all the phases in EC. Uh, I would rather uh, think that I would speak for five minutes and five minutes I will keep for your questions. If uh, regarding EC, uh, anybody wants to ask any question, uh, for the last 15, 16, 17, 20 years, so most probably come to ask me. But first, I give my introduction. I passed out in 1984. I did uh, civil engineering from IIT Delhi, and then I did MTech from IIT Rurki. So I have the experience of these two IITs as uh, uh, alumni or alumni association member. Then I did my PhD from uh, uh, Delhi University, DCE. Now it is known as Delhi Technological University. So uh, uh, I would speak uh, briefly about uh, uh, our association as I could gather. Uh, I must uh, appreciate that IIT Delhi Alumni Association, as people say, it is best in India. But in my opinion, it is the best in the world. And uh, our uh, director of IIT, Mr. Dogra, or at first, that first director, was first president of the Alumni Association. And uh, he created 
very good interaction in between the students. Say, uh, usually we all know, but uh, uh, we don't uh, sometimes, uh, like it passes by our mind, but uh, if we recall in the first year, I, I'm from five years back, in the first two years, our entry number was given alphabetically. So two years were for basic sciences, we interacted uh, with our batchmates who were from other disciplines. Say I'm civil engineer, so I was interacting because roll number was alphabetically, classes were based on that. So I interacted with electrical engineering, uh, chemical engineering students, other students. Then our hostel were also not discipline wise. I've seen in some NITs or some other institutes that they make that this is a hostel for civil engineering students. And they may, uh, they sometimes have seen that this is the hostel for first year student. This is for third year student. So they have association or their memory only with their year mate, uh, batch mates or their discipline wise. Say I'm civil engineer, so I will know only 40, 50, 60 civil engineers or the maximum my batch mates say about 100, 200, like whatever our batch was. When, but in IIT, in our hostel, we were interacting. Hostel was not year wise. I could know, like being 78 entry, I could know like the people who entered in 74, they were in the same hostel. And at the same time, I could know the people who entered four years back. So about seven, eight, nine years. So maximum interaction with each other. This was perhaps the brainchild of our first director or, or our first IIT Alumni Association president, uh, Dobra. My second uh, <clears throat> observation is that our constitution is very old uh, and uh, initially it was based on, uh, uh, you know, just faith or uh, just mutual trust. But now as our membership increased and it, uh, we become global, so it needs to be redrafted. We, we are feeling need of that because now we are 52,000 strong spread all over the world. And uh, just a few years back when I was also in EC from 2015 to 2018, our uh, global membership started. Before that, IIT Asso uh, Alumni Association was in the hands of some alumni, they were concentrated around Delhi because voting was manual and your physical presence was necessary for voting. So like globalization in that context was very difficult. I don't say it was impossible, but it was very difficult. And other people who were not living around Delhi, they were not taking much interest. Until today, we have not reached up to that level. The question comes, why should like global members participate and how should they participate? Why should they participate when they are not exercising the right of vote? Why should they participate when they cannot become EC member, uh, like office bearer? So this demand we were raising for a long time and uh, I must appreciate that our present director, he acted very, very positively in this direction. He supported this move. And now I have a pleasure as we see the change now, uh, say for example, our nearest, Mr. Pradeep Khanna, he is EC member and he is sitting in Australia. It was not possible a few years back because voting was not global. So we tried, about 10, 15 years back, we tried in association to co-opt some global members, but they again were not having equal powers. So my suggestion in this regard for globalization is that we should maximize the participation of all the global members. And for that, I suggest an idea that as per the population of the chapters, like we do uh, uh, for choosing or electing MP for the parliament, as per their representation, the proportional representation should be in executive committee. 
say our 10,000 members say they are in USA. So out of 52,000, 10,000 are there. That means 20 percent. So 20 percent executive committee members should come from USA. But still, you, in spite of global voting now, even now we are having a majority of the members around Delhi only or in India. I think in this uh, seven member they came to EC this time, only Mr. Pradeep Khanna, he was from outside India, otherwise six are Indians. Though IITians, they usually in old times and now also, uh, they are uh, very much found outside India also. So such suggestions I have in my mind and uh, other people were introducing their job and other things. So briefly, I can introduce uh, about me. After passing out from IIT, I worked for some time in uh, uh, design consultancy. Then I joined a government job, Ministry of Water Resources. I was a senior scientist over there. And uh, I did some research in mathematics that can be applied in all the fields. My book is available on the internet. It's a research in mathematics that some uh, people or we were missing since the days of Newton. But when I uh, investigate in, in my field, geotechnical engineering, I uh, hit upon that idea and that not only works only in uh, geotechnical, it equally works in heat equation. It equally works in periodical sunspots. It equally works in musical sounds. It equally works in tides in ocean even Big Bang Theory, cosmology. So if uh, some, someone interested in research, I would be pleased to share my ideas on that. And uh, <coughs> perhaps uh, it's all. And I, I would uh, invite your questions if somebody wants to ask me about the alumni association or uh, in the past. That's all from my side. Thank you. Well, actually, I love your thoughts, uh, uh, Sudhir, because uh, uh, as you rightly pointed out, our first is that we have to get our members more engaged in what we are doing. Hmm. And we should also, and the steps like having a global representation, I think are lovely ideas. Because, and that's why we have to also transform ourselves to a value creating association, which means because each one of us has got 20 different things that we get caught down with. So the association, apart from the emotional connect that we have, but also aspire to add any value to each one of our wide range of alumni to make it a totally, a truly global community. So uh, any, anybody has any questions for Sudhir? And if you have, you please put up your hands uh, on Zoom and I'll invite you. And you have 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So we take questions offline. With that, a big round of applause to Sudhir. Sudhir, thank you so much for sharing your perspectives. We thank you for all the hard work that you've done for being an EC member for 20 years. And we also acknowledge the fact that you see when voting was happening and you needed to be present in person, there wasn't an opportunity for the global community to take part. But we have now in a very different ball game altogether. So I encourage all alumni all over the world to take active interest. Join us. This is the opportunity for you guys as we transform ourselves. So look forward to and thank you once again, Sudhir. From New Delhi. Oh, thank you. From New Delhi, I want to go to Orange County in the US. Now, as I talked in the beginning that, you know, when it comes down to who do we associate the most, see, there are different communities we form. You know, it can be from the hostel, as we saw in the case of Kushagra and Sumit. It can be from the bats. 
it can be from the profession, it can be from the city. There are so many variables possible. But one of them is definitely your batch. I know, for example, that our batch has a strong WhatsApp group. So strong that I see 100 you know, messages a day and I, yeah, man, I don't have time to look at that. But yes, that is the kind of bonding which is there. And likewise, I hear similar stories about other batches. So this, I have kick-started having batch ambassadors. We have appointed three batch ambassadors. One is, I will introduce to you from Orange County. Number two is Manish from Toronto. Number three is Pulkit from Sydney. And we'll be adding more to the list. And each session we'll be presenting one batch ambassador. So today I am delighted to present Anshul Kumar from Orange County in California. Uh, Anshul is 2001 graduate from IIT Delhi. She has been with Deloitte Consulting ever since. She was a campus recruitment for US at that time because Deloitte wasn't like, operating in India at that particular point in time. So big, please give a big round of applause to Anshul and over to you Anshul. Thank you, Mr. Pradeep, for uh, giving me the opportunity to be part of this uh, very distinguished set of people. It was truly a humbling experience to hear all the different uh, speakers today. Uh, I'll just take a, uh, you already introduced me. Um, I'll just add a couple more things to my introduction. Um, um, and, uh, you know, as you mentioned, I've been part of consulting uh, since I uh, graduated from IIT Delhi. But what's been so great about it is that consulting has allowed me to travel to different places. And uh, that in turn has allowed me to keep in touch with a lot of my batchmates. And I, you know, every time I travel to a different city, I made it a point to look up my uh, batchmates and alumni from that city. And um, I think that's, that's, you know, that's been kind of a common thread with me through my, through my consulting career. Um, now, you know, we've heard from so many distinguished speakers today and IIT Delhi, this, uh, this alumni group is truly a very distinguished group to be part of. Uh, um, the, we have a few hundred thousand people spread across the world. And I was reading somewhere that there's a, you know, IIT Delhi leads the pack, um, as, uh, you know, in terms of the number of startups that we've opened. There's 900 startups totaling to about $20 billion of investment. And of course, we heard from Kushagra and Sumit today, uh, you know, who were, um, who were um, you know, uh, part of that community um, there. Uh, what I really find interesting is that, uh, you know, no matter what our personal journey has been, you know, what we've accomplished in terms of achievements, but there is this common sense of shared connection and shared understanding that we all have with each other. I think Kushagra mentioned a little bit earlier on trusted relationships that we still have with our batchmates. And I think that's very key to how we relate to each other, that sense of trust and belonging that we have. Um, so when Mr. Uh, Pradeep invited me to be part of this GCC initiative, I think that was one of the uh, one of the two key factors that I really liked was that it how this um, initiative harnesses that sense of personal emotional connection that we already feel to IIT Delhi and to each other and takes it one step further uh, because uh, not only does it uh, rely on that connection but it also channelizes it into something more concrete and something more tangible uh, such as this forum for instance you know in this forum itself you know I heard about how you know, we could, I could learn from expertise from how, what other people in this community were doing. Um, you know, Pratibha talked about the social causes and community uh, work that she's working on, which was very inspiring to hear. So whatever, you know, your personal interest or passion it is, whether it's building professional networks, whether it's mentoring, whether it's getting plugged into social causes, this forum provides an excellent opportunity to harness that. And I find that really personally very appealing. So I'm just going to close this out by saying that I'm really looking forward to this role to be also, you know, to um, further strengthen my co uh, connection to my batchmates, to the broader IIT Delhi alumni community and to IIT Delhi itself, and also hopefully be able to do my bit to contribute in some small but concrete way to further build this and strengthen this community. 
love your thoughts and I, I, gee what i really loved about anjul was when i got in touch with her she immediately connected with me two of her batchmates in sydney I mean, this is absolutely you see that is the the enthusiasm you know that what we kind of as i often talk about passion you know driving passion kind of a thing so lovely to have you on board look forward to getting you more and more engaged and a big round of applause for anshul thank you thank you so much for allowing me to be part of this community so from orange county we again head back to you know new delhi ncr and we go back to the times of 1966 batch those nostalgia times when the first batch of iit delhi graduated we've already met two lovely gentlemen harinder and agyapal from montreal so we are slowly and slowly getting round to identifying and getting into this community other members of 1966 batch and i'm delighted to present ramakant Ramakant is 1966 graduate from IIT Delhi has been very strongly in the civil construction sector has been in senior position with number of senior uh, with, with um, uh, big construction companies so ladies and gentlemen please give a round of applause to Ramakant Ramakant over to you let me see whether you are on mute i have unmuted oh yes okay okay ramakant and good to catch up with you after a couple of years so over to you i hope you are feeling well by now so uh, hi pradeep ravindra harinder satyapal sudhir and meeta i know all of you personally and dear almanai uh good evening you already know i am ramakant gupta 1966 btech civil uh i have been asked to revisit 1966 old time do i would like to cover our life at iit d2 i hope uh, pradeep will excuse me for this it was that hot summer of 1966 when everyone present under a makeshift shamiana was waiting for the arrival of dr sarupalli radhakrishnan the then president of india who gave the first convocation address at the institute to the young graduates passing out of iit delhi it was a proud moment for us first batch graduated and left iit delhi with confidence backed by scientific temper to serve the nation and the world though the institute started as college of engineering and technology in the year 1961 with course period of 5 years it was renamed as indian institute of technology in the year 1963 now i still fail to understand why the word engineering was not included but no that's how it was professor arun dogra was our first director many of our faculty members were british many of us had come to the institute from various states of india punjab uttar pradesh haryana bihar and probably two of our classmates were from abroad 
the institute provided us an atmosphere of brotherhood, unique and fruitful learning, mentorship, perfect infrastructure, and scholarly professors. Many of our professors were taken from Delhi College of Engineering. The environment at the institute was challenging to explore the unknown. The balance was maintained between technical studies, sports, cultural activities, and community works. We were trained to make a mark on the society with our scientific temper, which most of our batchmates did all over the world. The path was laid for our future batches to follow and excel. I can see uh, most of uh, graduates of later years have done very well in India and abroad. That is encouraging for me. The first batch struggled with doing calculation on side rules and log tables. There were no computers. Most equipment, equipments were not developed as these are now. The research activities in the institute were bare minimum. For us, the language or instruction was a hindrance in the first year. But there was no dearth of enthusiasm to be the leader in our respective fields, and we did make our mark. To look back, we started our initial classes in two buildings, textile technology and workshop building. The main college building and the administrative block came only a year before we graduated. Only batches offered were mechanical, electrical, chemical, civil, and textiles. However, due to lack of students, textiles engineering was discontinued and the students were distributed in other branches. There were no girl students in our batch. Now, I think uh, there are so many uh, branches and subjects at IIT Delhi. Perhaps uh, now we have got MBAs and other things. However, we started with very few. The roads in the campus were mostly dusty. We had only two hostels. Girls' hostel and other hostels were added later on. To go to the city, we had the option of only one DTC bus service, that is number 17. Most preferred mode of transport within the campus was on foot. We had only one uh, uh, classmate who had a car and one with a fantabulous scooter. The rest all were on foot. During the course of our study at IIT Delhi, we were into war with China in late 1962. These were difficult times with regular blackouts and sirens making eerie sounds. I remember for the first time, all the students went on hunger strike when we were given the option of eating rice or chapati during the war period, we could understand. We couldn't understand why this uh, preference is being asked because, after all, our stomach is the same. Our hunger strike crumbled after motherly treatment given by Mrs. Dogra, wife of our director. Many of our batchmates are no more amongst us. 
we will always cherish their memories in our hearts. I will show you two pictures taken at that time, which I cherish. The first picture is of my project in the fourth year. Uh, it is the design and analysis of hyperbolic paraboloid cable roof with parabolic boundaries. The present Dobra Hall roof is of the same uh, of the same uh, shape, but it is with the shell roof. So this is the project we did uh, in 1964-65. Uh, and uh, in the front part you are seeing is a strain gauge recorder, which was specially imported from UK for this purpose. So there was scientific temper and a uh, uh, lot of research during that time. The second picture, which uh, of course we cherish, is our talk with the, the Duke of Edinburgh, the Prince of Wales. And uh, he talked about his car which was standing at his back. And I talked about a uh, model and hobbies club, which I represented. And uh, it was a really very useful conversation. Now, uh, we celebrated our 50th anniversary of our graduation in 2016. The Institute celebrated its Golden Jubilee in the year 2011 and is now celebrating its Diamond Jubilee in the year 2020-2021. We have come a long way. I wish every one of you all the best in life. Jai Hind. Thank you very much, Ramakant. Those were the days, my friend. It's great to go down the memory. It reminds me of the time when I was in school at DPS or Delhi Public School. At that time, there used to be only one DPS at Mathura Road in Delhi. And when there was a monsoon, we used to get a holiday. So this is where and where DPS is now. And similarly, you very nicely yeah. put forward the picture of IIT Delhi the first batch was passing out and where is IIT Delhi now? Man, this is what a great story. A big round of applause to Ramakant. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank and, you and looking forward to getting you more involved in the initiative. Sure, sure. I will. From New Delhi, then we hop over to UK and Singapore where we now talk about the charter and the vision mission and the plan for this particular group as it goes down the globalization journey. And I have great delight to uh, welcome Manmohan and Sundi to talk about this and to engage with the group. So over to you, Manmohan. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. So we've had a couple of presentations so far and we collected a lot of uh, comments from you. Uh, so Ragi Sundi and I collected those comments. I won't go through all these comments in the interest of time, but I'll summarize these in just a little bit. Think of this as a sci-fi movie where the text is moving by quickly. <laughs> <laughs> That's Blade Runner, the previous one where, where the story is told at the beginning with the text moving. Basically, uh, the point is that we have uh, heard you and <clears throat> we've summarized. So the summary is uh, overall regarding vision and mission, the feedback we got from you was uh, like staying focused uh, to bring alumni together, vision statement should be short, uh, list of uh, that we need to compile a list of objectives for the organization, uh, mission and vision uh, should be common uh, for the global and local people. Uh, 
and uh, they were even bigger goals like uh, making India's administration more effective since most of it is on this chat today. So maybe that's a start uh, and then keep it simple. So overall, the, there were a number of suggestions of specific activities and these happen to be in two groups. One is really about how to make IIT Delhi more special, more successful. Uh, and I think uh, uh, Sundi had earlier presented this as the emotional connect that we had, uh, that we have with IIT, uh, and, and people uh, pointed out a number of different things. But the point is that they are really about how to make IIT Delhi more successful. And then the second group of activities uh, that came from your comments is about networking within alumni groups, so stronger uh, connections. So based on uh, what we've heard from you, I'll quickly go over the uh, proposed uh, vision and mission, but the bulk of this, uh, uh, the 10 minute session that we have, uh, Sundi will uh, discuss and get your ideas on activities, some of which we already have. So to uh, cut to the chase, as they say, this is what we are proposing, so keep it simple. So IIT Delhi GCC enables the continuing success of IIT Delhi, as well as the alumni globally. That's, uh, hopefully that's easy to remember. The point is that those two things, I, success of IIT Delhi and success of alumni uh, shows up. And then the mission again is twofold, to help alumni engage with IIT uh, D for the alma mater's continuing success and dot, dot, dot and to enable IITD alumni to engage with each other and with others. So that could be professional success and personal support. We all need personal support uh, and uh, uh, social networking. Uh, in that IIT Delhi alumni category, you can see where many of the things, efforts uh, Pradeep has been putting in um, also fall under helping students achieve their goals uh, before and uh, after graduation, IIT Delhi's efforts regarding industry, society, uh, peer institutions, 19. Uh, worldwide, uh, and a recognition of IIT Delhi by industry and peer institutions again. So I hope uh, this gives you a flavor. We don't have to memorize this right now, but a twofold mission in keeping with IIT Delhi success and in keeping with our own success as alumni. And we certainly saw lots of successful examples today. So I'm going to ask, uh, so, so this is vision and mission should be common throughout uh, uh, GCC. The activities might be more tailored, but I'm going to request Sundi to uh, discuss uh, activities. And I'll, uh, in case of suggestions, I'll type them as we go along. Great. Th 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 thanks, Manmohan. Uh, Pradeep, thanks for the opportunity. And, and a big shout out to the fantastic uh, uh, group of people that, that really brought this to life. So really, the purpose of IITDAA is to do what we are seeing today uh, with, with everyone that was there. And, and thanks, Manmohan, for uh, kicking, kicking us off uh, with, uh, with the session. So what we want to do in the next five, six minutes we have left is, uh, what do people in the group want, what kind of activities uh, can we do to bring this to life in terms of success for IITD and in terms of uh, success for the alumni community. Uh, so please, I don't want to speak, uh, just uh, unmute yourself and, and shout out on what you want and then Manmohan and I will just capture it. And, and uh, just for context, today we heard a lot of very, very nice emotional stories uh, thanks, uh, Ramakanji. Uh, starting from some very practical things that Sumit and uh, Kushagra started us with. So I think it's it's really really that continuum, isn't it? So please let us know what do you think IIT alumni uh, success would be, and what is it the success for IITD from your vantage points, and then we can uh, we can have a discussion. And specifically at this stage, and this is Pratif from Sydney, would be very interesting to hear from different countries as to what yeah. activities and plans you have in mind. 
Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Pradeep. Yeah, uh, while we are a global organization, it is not one size fits all. So uh, I don't know, Dipanka, if you are still there, you know, what are you seeing in Vietnam? Just not to put you on the spot, but, uh, or, you know, what is uh, Anchal seeing in, in, in the West Coast of the US? Uh, please give us some ideas on how we can take it forward. And Ramakant from, from uh, Delhi or, or, you know, so different places. Yeah. And again, to say that uh, while this document has been circulated and will be circulated again, but the idea is to bring it to some form of closure. We also yeah. recognize that this is work in progress document and will get continuously updated, but we should have a baseline version which reflects what we want to do and what we are planning to do. So that's why we are encouraging everybody to give their viewpoints on the call also. Well. I think one thing could be if we can nail down the vision and mission, the can activities I, list will keep growing dynamically. Yeah. yeah. So all I was saying was whenever somebody speaks up, uh, if they can just name themselves, because a lot of people are, uh, you know, keeping the video off from a bandwidth perspective. So, so back to you, Manmo. Yeah, uh, uh, Manmohan here from London, uh, saying that uh, we, if we can just nail down the vision and mission, and then we can keep the activities as a dynamic yeah. list. So any objections to this? <laughs> Raise your flag. <laughs> Hi, this is Anchal Kumar. I'd just like to say maybe a couple of, couple of things. Yeah, I really like the I really like how you collected the inputs already and summarized them into kind of, uh, you know, discrete points. I think from the California, Southern California perspective, to be more specific, um, I, I've, I've been, um, the kinds of events that I've seen are through the pan IIT organizations. I think, again, I like the idea of having this common charter and mission and then leaving it kind of individually up to different regions and to, you know, depending on the passion and interest everybody has to realize them into actual execution strategies. But one potential strategy could be with partnering up with organizations like Pan IIT because the reach and, uh, you know, funding for those organizations probably would help yeah. bring in a greater number of people together. Yeah. So we already have these local chapters in the U.S. at least uh, from the Pan IIT, and I mean I've attended a couple of their events, uh, and, but that was just one thought I had. And actually, yeah. you are one hundred percent correct, and the group has already captured these inputs because you see, when you are overseas, very often the external stakeholders do not differentiate between different IITs, and they look upon IITs as a single brand. So therefore. Yeah. Partnering with Pan IIT is a very, very important part of the strategy. But we have gone even further because we find in places like London, etc., there is a whole lot of partnerships which are with the IAMs as well. So we look at similar groups, you know, performance. So very much on the card. So thank you very much for that. Back to you, Manmo. No, uh, Ramakant has a question. Yes, Ramakant, please unmute yourself. Uh, what I wanted to say was that when we are talking of Pen IIT, it is basically uh, alumni from all IITs, and now we have got uh, almost uh, 21 IITs. Uh, many years ago, there was a Pen IIT created by some individuals, and that was purely a financial arrangement. And then there were directors and chairmen and things like that, which then uh, was uh, uh, opposed by uh, the alumni associations. And uh, then all the IIT and IIT and alumni associations came together. And uh, that particular Pan IIT uh, was not given the name of Pan IIT. Um, the case went to court also. So now what Pan IIT is there, it contains uh, members from uh, all the IITs and uh, what uh, IIT Delhi had at that time decided was that president and the past president will be the members of Pan IIT uh, uh, 
Pan IIT from IIT Delhi. But what we are now talking is, uh, in fact, uh, IIT Delhi alumni to come together from all over the world because we ourselves are in great number and uh, distributed all, all over the world. So I don't know whether we are talking of Pan IIT, which means. Uh, uh, so Ramakant, let me answer your question. And we've gone through actually in earlier meetings to similar topic because there are chapters there. There are countries like USA or Canada where there are large numbers. There are also countries like say, you know, Bhutan and Iran where there is a one odd member each. You know. So when we talk of, you know, chapters and globalization, what we are doing is that we'll have possibly multiple chapters from IIT Delhi in USA, and maybe one chapter covering a couple of countries where the representation is small. So in other words, what that means is that depending on the number of alumni that we have, that's one part of the story. Second is that, you see all this, I know there is a whole lot of history behind, you know, different pan IITs and all that kind of a thing and who's going to be president and vice president. I really couldn't care to hoots about it, honestly. As far as I'm concerned is that we have to make our alumni engagement as wide as possible and to include as many members as we are. So we partner with whom it makes sense, period. You know, and let the local guys decide what they want to do. But uh, I will, uh, you know, leave it to Manmohan and to Sundi. Pradeep, to uh, Pradeep uh, this quickly, what, what, yeah. Uh, uh, in the interest of time, I just want to say, uh, Ramakanji, uh, the word pan IIT is not a, a legal construct. The idea that we came up with was, uh, does it make sense for us to be uh, limited to IIT Delhi, or do we take more of a, a, a broader perspective? So, so we're not trying to take over any it's not a power grab from IITD to other IITs. It is, I think, as Manmohan said, uh, to Anchal's point, uh, in in some parts of the world. Uh, but everywhere in the world, the IIT brand carries a, a, a very significant value. So does it make sense to piggyback yeah, yeah, uh, the uh, IIT name? Right? Yeah. That was the third. Yeah. Very yeah. nice. In fact, I am of the opinion that uh, more the better. Okay. So, okay, Pardeep, can I, can I just add from yeah. Canada? Please, please. Uh, because last 25 years, we had a great success story here in Canada because it was all IITs started off together and we had, we built a very, very strong IIT alumni here. And I think we should carry on uh, building the brand name of IIT in the same manner through that umbrella. And at the same time, on the back end, we are trying to strengthen the group of IIT Delhi also, because we have now close to 200 in, in Canada from IIT Delhi, and we have over 1200 from all the IITs together which makes a big strength and we have established a very good brand name in Canada as an IIT. I think we should carry on with the same uh, way. And when we build our constitution also, uh, we'll be able to contribute and help in that way. I think in the bigger countries, it should be like this. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the sharing. Uh, any, uh, I know there are people from, uh, uh, from, from certainly Aussie, people from uh, uh, Australia, of course, we know Pradeep. Any other, any other viewpoints? Well, uh, Sundi Deepankar here. Yes, I think, uh, I, I, I'm looking at this uh, for the first time. So as uh, I think uh, there were some comments, it would be great to look at this document uh, later. Yes, yeah, sure. But I, I, I think the youngsters remarks, should give their even, ideas a little more. A recent batch uh, yeah, candidates. Yeah, Ravi. Uh, Vijay we'll, Yavali, Toronto. We'll, we'll ask them, but maybe, maybe we can let uh, uh, Deepak complete his thought. Yeah, very, very, quick, very quick comment for from a Vietnam standpoint, what I would yeah. say is uh, that it's one of those unique uh, opportunities to make a tangible impact on the industry, academia, and academic institute to academic institute collaboration uh, dimension or corridor, mm -hmm. if you will. Right. Because uh, what's happening is that there's a lot of uh, Indian, uh, the Indian investment into Vietnam has gone up mm. over the last few years, but the Vietnamese investment into India hasn't. And this is where I think if uh, some of the research, some of the innovation work, which is happening at the Institute or the ecosystem of startups, etc. 
there is there, there there is a lot of interest for the industry here to 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 leverage some of that and leapfrog you know and not reinvent the wheel here right. so i think uh, i i think that's that's a great opportunity uh, also the whole journey around human capital development which we as an economy in india have seen particularly around science and technology talent if there are insights journeys experiences and particularly as a leading institute of the country uh, there is a lot of opportunity i'm personally in you know, talking to the embassy here uh, and the chambers of commerce and uh, supporting them on this so happy to pick it up offline with you and uh, and pradeep ji and we can discuss the the, the and Man Mohan is actually helping lead. And Man Mohan, so yes. I'll, I'll get the three of us together, Deepankar. Uh, thank you, thank you for that. Uh, and I think uh, if you can see the screen, Man Mohan is actually highlighting. That's right. Uh, so, some of these it. points uh, actually came up in previous uh, uh, sessions that we've had. But thank you for building yeah. building on that for for sure. Uh, uh, thank you, Deepankar. Uh, um, I, have I know, Pradeep, uh, uh, yeah, please. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, over to you, Harinder. Harinder, please. Uh, uh, what I see here is. Uh, two dimensions which is iit delhi's continuing success and alumni continuing success yeah but the third dimension which is india's success okay uh, probably it is somewhere i haven't yeah. seen i, I can answer that is that. for me an extremely important uh, aspect yeah that uh, you know we 52000 of us yeah Uh, from top class institutes can help india succeed by taking on the right uh, uh, ventures right uh, discussions with the government and there is a power in this number as well as where we come from yeah yeah uh, we we had uh, discussed that uh, i am just uh, showing this to you yes uh, please uh agyapal had made that uh, comment quite forcefully right. so the reason it it is still included but it's included through iit delhi because iit delhi has unnat bharat iit delhi has a number of quote unquote india focused projects so we can always do things independently but as iit the alumni associations uh, global chapter we can work through iit delhi so i'm not i'm not uh, yeah I'm not no i mean no, no i mean if i uh, uh, okay the distinction is me yeah. as an individual if i want to work with some ngo uh, in education maybe through pratibha uh, then i can do it as an individual but as iit the alumni associations uh, global chapters i think i bundled it with the iit uh, delhi success because iit delhi so this is um, so so uh, so this one uh, supporting unnat bharat uh, and other social initiatives that comes from uh, india focused uh, initiatives yeah uh, so, sorry uh, uh, yeah uh, professor sodhi i am just intervening but uh, our cha iit delhi alumnization charter have okay. national activity is is written over preamble itself okay. so we have a india country focus and we have a society focus so it is our preamble itself when you read the our I mean, so but these are i think slightly more tricky okay. thing we'll have a separate session to because what you are discussing is not a easy topic because yeah. we are coming with a new idea so we'll have a, a smaller group they can sit and do okay. the brainstorming because there are lot of dimension already th things are in place only thing it is not uh, i mean uh, people are not aware it's a, i think some what our mistake also that we have not uh, done the homework properly but yeah it's already there we have a, we have four focus first is our alumni second is our uh, institute third is student fourth is india national these are four focus area we define in our preamble itself so we have to uh, uh, plan all our activity across these four since there global things were missing so we thought something come from your side then we can integrate and we can have a new charter new way of doing so that is there but uh, because we have another more and more session is there that is also global we are having music uh, i mean event but it is all global in nature so that also i think i have to live in between i thought i'll just as a it delhi alumni uh, association president i thought i will just uh, just say one or two lines and just uh, because the other event also started where i had to <laughs> 
give you my welcome address as a uh, IT day. Okay, so <laughs> now and since I hope we let you go. Yeah. Now, Sorry. what we will do is that in the interest of time, yeah. what we will do is two things. One yeah. is that this document will be circulated to everybody. Yeah. And mind you, this has yeah. already been circulated a number of times. So we do yeah, need to draw closure. And number two is that, yes, anybody who wants to take an active part, please give your name within the next three, four days so that you can become part of the group along with Manmohan and with Sundi and you take it to the next level forward. But our target is that before the end of next meeting, which is on 13th of uh, September, we close out and baseline version 1.0. So if that yeah. be the case, any, any uh, Manmohan and Sundi, any more comments that you would like to add? Just, just one, one last comment, Manmohan, if I may. Uh, this is again a, uh, a, a, a sort of a, a guiding construct. This is That's not supposed correct. to be, you know, uh, uh, a Listen. legal document that meets everybody's requirements. Mm -hmm. I think Manmohan said it very nicely. We try to take a lot of inputs, but of course, welcome to take uh, other inputs also. But this is a way we can put as a structure, thank you, Manmohan, uh, so that we can really action these things. So Ravi, not intending to create a new thing or uh, I mean, they're oh. not trying to leave something out, but more of a way to think. And, and last thing for them, you know, please provide your inputs. Uh, words are important, uh, but then we want to keep it simple. We want to keep it actionable and then let the real thing happen in the countries, right? Um, and, and, you know, not lose sight of that's where action happens like we heard throughout the day. So Pradeep and Manmohan, with that, let's uh, give it back to uh, Pradeep. Uh, but you know, welcome, you know, all our places, welcome to get your inputs. Thanks for so the how, how, will this, how, how will this document be circulated or made available? I, I, will, I will circulate uh, this. But, I will circulate yeah. this. And anybody who we wants to be part, a... part of the group can send me the name and, you know, we will add you to the committee. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We can and, make it and, as a Google I... document so yeah. people can go and edit on it. Okay. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be precisely. It is, it's okay. democratic, uh, guys. Everybody is, we put it in, in Google Drive, shared drive, yeah. so people can put their own inputs. You know, it will be a track changes, so we will have that. So it is a democratic process. But Mohan and I just started it, but, you know, we want everybody to own it and contribute to it, please. Pradeep, and, please. I, and I believe that uh, the next meeting should be only on this aspect. Yes. No, yeah. It, Narendra, we will not only... we will not have a full time session. See, because not everybody is interested in this. So that's why I'm saying anybody who wants to have an active discussion, we can have a separate session. But with anybody who yeah, wants yeah. to join it, yeah. so this is not something Correct. that we can have a big forum meeting on that kind of thing. Mm. Correct. Correct. Uh, well, people can have input. Uh, yes. On something which is becoming kind of our uh, vision and mission. No, no, understand, but people are no, sure. to give their inputs by the Google be... document. And if they want to take an active yeah. interest, so, they're welcome to do it because, see, the reality is that we've got more than 40 yeah. people in the call and a lot of people may may not be, it's really up to them. And if, if there is enough interest, more than happy to have a session on that. Not a problem at all. Yeah. Hmm? Why not have a session on that? Let's have a session on that. Yeah. No, no, I, I will ask people to, you know, let them, because there's no point having Separate sessions. Session. We, we, as it is, we are stretched for time. We can't have, un see, so therefore, if if I see that more than 10 people saying that, yes, they want to have a session, let's have a session on that. Not a problem at all. Yeah. And in the yeah. meanwhile, so, I will encourage everybody who wants to take an active interest, join the group. I encourage everybody to give their feedback on the Google Doc. This is your vision and mission. But the only thing is that we've got to draw a closure to it's been going on for four to five weeks. And you know that, see that what, what is this thing is that we don't want to just keep stretching it on and off, waiting for feedback when we've sent it around so many number of times for feedback. Yeah. That's the only yeah. thing that I'm kind of trying to bring about it. Okay. So next meeting, next meeting, we will make it the final day. So yeah. conclude, then we'll review and make it... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Any amendment we can do it later on also. We yeah. have flexible it's, document. Absolutely. Yeah, but it seems like there is some passion, there is some interest, so that is very good to hear. Uh, so please, those who are interested, contribute. <laughs> and uh, Manmohan and I and Ragi can you know synthesize it. So we don't need to take up because this was a fantastic uh, two hours with a lot of good insights from so many people. 
So mm -hmm. this is a small piece of that. So so yeah. let us take it in that perspective. Yeah. But thank thank you, you know, so much. Please, for your... yes, I'll say. Uh, uh, I think it's next speaker. I am there because I have to go to another meeting. That is also global. <laughs> Uh, we have a music I'm sorry, Mr. President. Program. I'm sorry, Mr. President. We this is a democratized forum. Anyway, you are eight o'clock. Anyway, anyway, you are eight o'clock. But now we are eight thirty. You are time. You are very punctual as far time is concerned. Listen, so I I uh, gave them. Uh, I postponed their event, and I told eight thirty will start. Eight o'clock this will conclude. So I'll come to eight thirty. Now they are asking me to please come and give the welcome address there because that's also a global event. Uh, people are coming. Now. now. Now, we don't want to more time. Just I told I'll over, to, over to you. Over to you now. What do you want to say? Over to you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you, Pradeep. Uh, it's a very uh, fantastic uh, session. We are, uh, every time we are having, and good uh, evening uh, as far as India is concerned, but you can take the salutation as per the time zone. And uh, uh, because I also eagerly look for this event, even though I have a lot of events to do and a lot of activities are there as a, uh, president uh, of IIT Delhi Animation, and I'm very happy that you all guys having lot of faith me and giving lot of permission to do lot of experiment and allow me to uh, do new things which has not done in the past. So I'm very thankful to you all guys. So I would like just to say that uh, uh, just small things which one sentence will describe uh, all our journey or we have discussed. And uh, uh, that one sentence I'll speak, then I'll just uh, acknowledge the presence of the. I, on behalf of IDL administration, the guys who have just, uh, uh, we get them uh, facilitation. So first thing, uh, I will just start from the facilitation part. Uh, we have, we got uh, Sumit and Kusagar, uh, uh, we have just uh, given them facilitation and the media is also covering this event. Uh, we sent uh, event to the media also, PR agency, so, so they also uh, cover, they also come and listen. And the, I think, yeah. So that is a uh, one. So we have uh, the Sumit has contacted me in the 18th of August, and he told me that uh, there is a news is embargo. So don't disclose this uh, news that we have been uh, got this prestigious award. So we have, now already we know that. But Sumit has contacted me. And then uh, then all the story. Uh, then from 20th August, then we uh, then we are all proud of his achievement and his. Uh, I mean, the son of our professor is our alumni. We have heard both uh, Sumit and Kusagri. Then uh, the Pratibha came and they has, she has told all the inspiring story. And uh, she is uh, not only All India ranked third, or he, she is a woman topper also. She is this year woman topper. And she, we have not, uh, she has proved her rank also by uh, sharing her uh, inspiring uh, stories and the ideas. So we have done. Then we have the that new initiative. We have taken the batch for dinner where Meeta was there, Dipankar was there, and uh, Anshal Dwar. They are all very stimulating new uh, ideas. And my senior colleague Sudhir, uh, he has discussed about the EC. And then the um, uh, senior uh, from senior batch, uh, Mr. Ramakant Gupta, has given a lot of. Uh, I mean, he has taken us to the past. So having said that. Yesterday, I received a call from our IIT Delhi director. And I mean, he called me, but I somehow could not pick up his phone. Then again, called him. Then he called me that we want that uh, this J men and J exam. Uh, there are only two times they have been postponed. And we want this thing to happen. I want the alumni to help me out in this. And then I told sir, uh, in all in all your speech, you recognize the role of IIT, recognize the role of alumni, but you never speak about IIT Delhi alumni institution. So. <laughs> But I know that we uh, that is uh, we have to go a long way. But still, you have to recognize our role because we also backside we are working uh, uh, to make how the more engaging, how to have uh, the topics, how to engage the uh, bring the alumni the one for from. This is not that easy job. People will just kind of will not come. So then uh, so he has agreed, and I think uh, he has from uh, Canada. The people have complained me that uh, that uh, Sunil that. Uh, I think Vijay has complained me that uh, we have been not asked, but since uh, that discussion between our directors, 4.30, 6 o'clock we have started. So there was no time, we had to make the poster, we had to make, change the theme also. So it was a like last moment preparation like we do. So, but anyway, the things has gone. Now, as we are talking about the Pan IIT, we have developed, oh, by the time I was uh, conducting my session on JE, how to create the JE, uh, that uh, we have the panelists from the, uh, our alum. And by that time I concluded already, uh, I got a uh, uh, WhatsApp message that already our uh, site, we have put up the, uh, this uh, module, they were put up the form, they already it's ready, Mukul Singla is doing this thing. And I'll tell you that within one night, IIT Bombay 
three three elements from 2018 batch and IIT Delhi guy. They have made Eduride. You www dot Eduride dot in already is up for to take off this. So pan IIT is happening in IIT also. Professor Ram Ram Gopal Rao is also part of that WhatsApp group and uh, Rohit Koshin. They all take the initiative and the uh, website is up. So pan IIT we are working also here. Then we uh, uh, that uh, Kalpen suggested why not I am involved I am also. And we immediately, Pan IIT uh, India uh, Chairman, the General Secretary, everybody is in the uh, loop. And even we want to do for NEET also the medical uh, competitive exam also. And we, I appeal all the alumni association, uh, uh, sorry, alumni mem uh, member of the alumni association, that uh, come forward whatever way you can help uh, you know, to the students who belong to poor section uh, of the society who does, who are I mean looking for some help either uh, by uh, way of some transportation or other things. Thank you, over to you, great session. And thank you, uh, Pradeep, giving me the opportunity. And I uh, thanks the specially uh, invitee this time, uh, like five invitee, I already told uh, Meeta, and, uh, Anchal, Deepankar, and then uh, uh, this uh, uh, Pradeep and, uh, sorry, uh, Pratiba and uh, 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 Sumit and Kushagri. Thank you and have a good time. Yes. Thank and, you, Pradeep. And if you can return the screen back, thank you very much, Ravi. Thanks, Ravi. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, can you return come to? Can you return the screen back? Uh, you are on screen chaining mode it at the is... moment, Ravi. Are who has how it has come? It's a Bibanshu Shekhar. Yeah, Bibanshu. Yeah, I am not. Okay. Bibanshu Shekhar Chaudhary. So while I'll, we wait yeah, for this. While we wait for uh, the person who's holding the screen and let me see whether I can give it back or not. So from New Delhi, we go over to Canada. And from Canada, we talk about one of our initiatives in terms of our engagement activity, as well as in terms of content. And that is a newsletter. So uh, Anivan over here in from Canada, along with Sanjay in the US has been doing a great job and they're targeting to get the first session out of the newsletter, the GCC newsletter before 31st August. So over to you, Anivan. Uh, thanks, Pradeep, sir. Uh, can I please share my screen because I really wanted to show everyone the newsletter. It's kind of finished. Absolutely, absolutely. But, uh, yeah. Oh, brilliant, thank you. <laughs> Okay, uh, just, yeah, yes, yes, it's here. Yeah, can everyone see it? So this is how it will appear in the inbox, in your email. So I've done it on a platform called MailChimp and it's uh, free and it's it gives access to over a thousand people. I think more than that, we might need to pay like three or four dollars a month, but it's, it's not much. So um, this is like the kind of logo I made and I'm going to put this in every newsletter with the ITD uh, logo and then the global chapters and connection. So I started with the keynote address by the director and uh, then we have the keynote address from you followed by the team of our uh, global uh, EC members. And then I formatted the table. Uh, Sanjay sir said like color the regions according to geography. So this is one change which I have to do. So like Canada and US will be together and so on. And then I made this map about where our global advisory board members are. And if you see like the logos are the 60 year logo, uh, the golden Jubilee logo, which IIT released a few days ago with the elements of sustainability and the alumni logo on the other side. And then I have the global advisory members according to the map. So for example, Shashi Ma'am and Ambassador Deep Kapoor would be from the US, so it's like Team USA with the LinkedIn profiles. Then we move over to Canada, um, Europe, um, UK, and so on. So there are a few details which I need. For example, Anil sir has provided me a picture. I'm gonna up update that here. And uh, then I moved on to the special interest groups, which we have three of them, Global Women Alumni, Times and Higher Rankings, and Emerging Technology. So I made this logo. And then uh, we, I put the picture from the Global Women Alumni slide which Shashi Ma'am shared. And we have the vision, mission, and the objectives. Next, we have the Global Rankings SIG. And I picked out the two most important images and the key findings. And I uh, noted them down here. And then we move on to felicitations. We're felicitating Professor Sodhi. And I put his write-up and the reason 
and then we have the upcoming events so like the iit daa japan chapter so i kind of made this logo of the iit delhi japan chapter which has the japanese colors and the pagoda as a symbol of culture and what's the status and the action items and finally we have the editorial team where sanjay sir said try to put both of our photos together so i'm just going to have to edit that and finally we have where you reach out to us through the linkedin group the youtube channel and the itd a website so this is in short <laughs> what i have done and it will be ready in like two or three days and i'm going to i just need one detail from uh, rajiv kapoor sir who is the global advisory from the asian re asian region so i'm trying to reach him or reach him i can't seem to find him on linkedin but apart from that everything's been done so <laughs> this is what i have and i'd like to say that uh, sanjay sir has been very very helpful by email